in the season. I mean, well, that's when it slows down a little bit. When you think about it, you know, we're, you know, when school starts, the, the day before school starts, we'll have a team meeting that night, make sure everybody shows up, and have everybody introduce themselves, and we'll go through what, what's going on for the next eight weeks, two weeks before fall ball starts. We do a lot of skill work and lifting, and then uh, six weeks of, of baseball and lifting. And then, you know, the off season, which is the end of October all the way until finals for the most part, uh, we'll go through all that. And so, you know, once we get off the field in late October, then it starts to slow down because we only can work with them so many hours a week. So you get a chance to, you know, maybe reflect a little bit there when you just get away from here. You know, last year I got vacation with the family for the first time in a long time as I reminded all the time by my wife. So, uh, you know, maybe we'll do that again. So, uh, then was that in October? Or when that was actually that? over Christmas. Okay. Yeah. Where, where, where'd you guys go? What'd you do? Uh, you're really <laughs> digging now, man. Uh, we went to Hawaii. How about oh, that? Nice. Yeah. It's your time to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of strange being away from home over Christmas. First time I'd ever done you guys that. Go to Maui or the- sure did. <laughs> you know, you know the better places, I yeah. guess. So, well, I never- hey, I just they just told me where to go and I showed up. They did. Karen did all the I planning. Got to go to Hilo one time. That's okay. But it's not yeah. Maui. Is Hunter Milligan still? Yeah, Hunter has a. From what it's looking like right now, you know, he's got arm problems. Um, he had surgery, I guess, his senior year. Went ahead and said, "Come on in. Let's see if we can get this worked out." Looked like he was going to be okay. Tried to pitch. Arms always bother and always bother him. And I think he was told a couple of days ago that looks like that he's going to have to have some surgery. So I think what he's going to do is uh, have surgery and do his rehab back at home and maybe go to school closer to home and do all his rehab there and then start throwing again at the end of next year. We'll see how it goes and then see if we're going to bring him back. I would say that's that's the game plan right now, but he won't be able to pitch this year. You Same made, problem that he's had. It's a shoulder issue. You made more progress on uh, exhibition games. I know you mentioned no use. Of yeah. Well, there's a – I really can't we, – we are there, – there's a new rule this year that we can play two outside competition games and they don't – take off our spring games the most games you can schedule in spring is 56 it used to be that if you played a couple of games you then you could play 54 or whatever this year they've changed the rule finally and it makes sense because softball has been able to do it forever and we couldn't figure out why we couldn't uh we get to play outside competition there is rules about how far you can go and uh missing class but uh we're going to try to play a couple games none of the details are, are out yet um but w- the plan would be to probably play one on the road in this region and then and then one here i can't really give you anything more than that whenever we get some things lined up obviously our game here you know we'll we'll, we'll tell you more about it well, you obviously got hit hard in the draft you know from your team but you made it through with your signing spree how, how good do you how good do you think you guys could be next year um, you know, I think it's it's really going to depend on a few things. I think number one, we got to we got to get our, our starting rotation figured out. Um, I think position player wise, um, with the addition of uh, one junior college player that will be a sophomore that has experience, and then obviously we have three pretty good hitters in the middle of our lineup coming back. Two catchers with a little bit of experience, but they've been around Division One baseball, and battling it out, and a young freshman catcher coming in. We'll see how he does. Um, I think that uh, there's a couple of guys in, the, in our program that it's time for them to step up. A guy like Kenley or McFarland, and then grab a position. Um, you know, uh, we'll see how that turns out. And then uh, there's a couple of very good high school kids that you don't expect them to come in and have a year like Martin or maybe Heston Kirsch's dad, but they can come in and play, and maybe we can platoon somebody out there. Uh, and, uh, you know, you got a transfer or two coming in that with experience that are older, if that works out. Um, I think we could have a good club. I think you have to look at the league, you know. Where's the league going to be? You know, and I said this earlier, LSU got all their guys back. They didn't sign. You know, the center fielder draft eligible, they didn't sign. Number one pitcher was a sophomore draft eligible. He didn't sign. And then the best, one of the best hitters that's ever gone through their program, the right fielder, Andrew Duplantis, I think he's got the hit record already. He didn't sign. He was going to be, he's going to be a senior. They're going to get their starting, they're going to get their shortstop back. They got hurt last year. Uh, 
you know, so they're going to be awfully good. So we're going to be able to, you know, climb ahead of them. You got Ole Miss. This will be their the junior year of all their their number one recruiting class from three years ago. Um, they're pretty excited about their team. A and M got their whole team back. Mississippi State pretty much got most of their kids back. Auburn got a lot of their guys back. You know, they got a guy named Tanner Burns, maybe the best pitcher in the country over the next two years. Turned down a lot of money out of high school. He'll be a sophomore. So, yeah, they lost Casey Mize. So, you start looking at the league, you know, just name five teams. The other team's us in Alabama. Alabama's got a young coach that's been getting after it and bringing in a lot better players. So, um, I guess our thing is, is is just to try to get as good as we can get and not worry about everything. And I don't know how to answer that. Um, I think we're going to have a good team. And I think we got a lot of guys that know how to win and that want to win and know what our program's all about. And uh, we need to find a way. And so it all starts with pitching. And if we can pitch uh, innings one through five, we're going to be pretty good because I feel like we got a lot of guys that can get us through the sixth through the ninth. Why did Jackson Rutledge decide to leave? Yeah, just not enough pitching time. Probably wasn't real happy that he didn't make travel squad. Um, wants to be a starter. Um, there's a lot into that and probably can't tell you all of it um, because there's always more than we can tell you. Uh, so um, inconsistent, you know, who knows? You know, there's just junior college pitching every day, get the ball. They play four or five games a week. They play seven inning games. They need starters. Um, you're going to go to a good program where they turn out a lot of pro guys, give them an option to sign. So that's – I don't know. What, what is that like, That I mean, you get a lot of kids in high school in here because they were starters in their high school, and now you want them to be relievers or closers, and it always seems like, you know, they keep wanting to start. How do you – Well, usually it works itself out. A lot of times they'll tell you, I'm good with that. You know, deep down, maybe they, they are, maybe they aren't, maybe their parents aren't or whatever. So, you know, this is the way I look at it. The Arkansas Razorback baseball team comes number one over everything, over me, over players. We have got to do a good job doing what we do, and it's all about how that locker room is. Um, He's a great kid, and he's got a good arm. Um, If he's healthy, uh, he has a chance to pitch for a long time. Um, You know, didn't get to pitch a whole lot, didn't go real good towards the end, all over the place. And, uh, yeah, how it's effective. Sometimes you just, uh, you know, how do I want to say it? Sometimes you just got too many guys. Sometimes you uh, guys aren't as good as you were hoping they were. Uh, some guys aren't as patient as they need to be. Uh, they, they want it now, and uh, a lot of times it's not them. It may be somebody else that is involved with them. So we all deal with it at this level of Division One baseball, which is you know one of the top 50 programs in the country and in most years probably in top 20. And... You're going to have good players, and, you know, they turn around money to come here, and then you got somebody in their ear, and, hey, do what you got to do. We'll be fine. You had mentioned at one point during the year about Heston Kerstad maybe getting a shot at first. Do you envision him staying in the outfield or going to give him yep. a shot first in the, in the fall? Well, you know, I think that we're going to move him over to right field. To me, he's more of a right fielder. You know, he actually throws really well, just the way he moves. Left field's a little bigger here. It's bigger in a lot of parks than right, just the way it is some places. You start looking at all the stadiums, unless they've just got a, you know, what I call a cookie-cutter outfield, which is the same all the way around for the most part. Um, the fields in our league are shorter and right. And uh, he's a, actually a good outfielder. Yeah, he dropped a couple balls late in the season, but running and getting the ball, he, you know, running to the ball, he's been good. Uh, um I think he got worn down a little bit, to be honest with you. He played every game. Probably the only freshman I've ever had in my coaching career that played every game his first year. So uh, that's one reason he's here. He's back. He went home. He was supposed to go play in the Cape Cod League, and we pretty much said, hey, you probably just need to go rest. And uh, I think he was good with that. And uh, he's here lifting. He's back in town lifting and getting ready for fall ball. But uh, I could put him there. If if we go through fall ball and we realize, hey, he could go there and – this kid could go in the outfield, and that makes us a better team. Um, that's a good option. I think it makes him more valuable to the pro people too down the road. You know, he can—he's a legitimate average outfielder at their level, and he's a good first baseman. He's a big kid with power. Um, I mean, it's something that could happen. I don't foresee it right now, but uh, you know, it—it it, it could happen. But I, I do see moving him probably to right field. So, so who would be in play in left then? Well, I just said we don't know yet. You tell me, and we'll go. He's a candidate. 
Oh, well, I got a lot of candidates. I got two freshmen. I got one freshman that runs a six five sixty coming in that is playing in a really average league, but he's hitting almost five fifty. Um, he won't do that here. Uh, I got another freshman coming in that runs a six five sixty from the East Coast. That's you know that already weighs one hundred eighty, one hundred ninety pounds. That that's pretty good. I uh, you know uh, the Goodhart kid that. We got in out of San Jack, played left field for them. He could also play first base, third base, right field. Good hitter. I mean, I just named three off the top. And I actually didn't name the freshman. You just said Yeah, I won't name the in. freshman because they haven't done anything yet. Coach, last year you mentioned that when you were putting the schedule together, you said, what was I thinking of the yeah. brutal schedule? How about yeah. this upcoming schedule? Well, last year's schedule, again, I've said it many a time, it, it evolves, you know, over, over three and four years out when you get – you schedule those weekend non-conference series, you got to go out that far. Like, I'm already working on 21 and 22. And then the midweek series, you know, you get a few in there, and then maybe somebody gets dropped or calls you or emails you, and you get, hey, we can work this out. Uh, this year's schedule, I mean, we're going back to Texas for our, our return of that trip. It'll be during our spring break in between two conference games. Uh, Charlotte comes back here for a couple of midweek games in early March. Um, the conference series is what it is, you know, whatever whatever they tell us. We're playing, a, you know, the schools, the, the three or four teams from the East, Eastern Division. Um, you know, non-conference, I think we have, uh, you know, we play at USC, returning that trip to Southern California. Um, I think we play Stony Brook, who went to the World Series a couple, well, I guess 2012, somewhere in there. Is that right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know when they went. But, uh you know, that's just a few that jump off, off my head. I think we go to Missouri State. I think we have Memphis in here. You know, I haven't really looked at it lately, so kind of moved on and kind of looking down the road, to be honest who, with you. Who are the SEC East teams you're playing? You mentioned Tennessee, right? Tennessee uh, at Kentucky, and that's in May, and their new ballpark should be done. That's about a $45 million project. Um at Vanderbilt, who probably are preseason one, two, or three, they have eight other starting position players back. Made it to the Super Regional and almost won it. Lost at home to Mississippi State in that heartbreaker. I think it went extra innings, maybe. Uh, and a lot of big-time pitchers, and they kept kept a couple of guys. Um, so they, uh, you know, they'll obviously be good. I know those three. I don't know. You got t- Tennessee. And Missouri. Did I mention Missouri? Missouri, Tennessee. That's Kentucky and uh, yeah and Bandy. So yeah, I guess we don't play Florida, Georgia. Georgia, yeah. So so Missouri and Tennessee are here. Tennessee's here, Missouri's here, Kentucky's away, Bandy's away. All good. All good. People want to know Missouri's coming. Yeah, it's going to be a big. Yeah, I think that's opening weekend, maybe. Is that right? Ooh. It might be. Yeah. 